Hey everyone, this is Ellen from A Thousand Splendid Books and today I'm going to give you my favourite fantasy series forward slash standalone. So starting off with The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is by far one of my favourite standalone fantasy novels. It surrounds a story following this circus that kind of appears out of nowhere. It's got a very fantastical element to it. It's just almost fairy tale like in the way of its telling. I won't go into too much of the synopsis because I don't want to ruin it for you, but it follows two particular characters, one of them being Celia Bowen, who is the daughter of a magician, and I think the other guy in this is called Marco, it's been a while since I've read it, and it's about them essentially competing this is by far one of my favourite standalone fantasy novels. Everything about it from the cover to the last page is absolutely fantastic and everything is so well drawn together. I mean Erin Morgenstern writes fantastically, she's by far one of the best authors I've ever read. Everything she does is just so well tuned, her descriptions are just fantastic, her play on words, her development of characters, everything about it. If you love fantasy and you love kind of being taken away from your daily life and you just want to forget about everything, pick up this book, it's great, it's not too heavy going because it's just so damn good. <laughs> Moving on to the next one. So next up is the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I love Brandon Sanderson, I have to admit I only just came across him fairly recently. I didn't know anything about the Mistborn trilogy, these are actually my dad's books so I'm gonna have to give these back to him but I've going to order my own copies of these because they're just so good. I can't be without them anymore. The Mistborn trilogy follows the story about Vin, um, who is a kind of, I suppose, a commoner, a thief, and it's about her rise to power and about overthrowing this Lord Ruler, at least in the first book, and then it kind of progresses after that. But I don't want to go into it too much because I don't want to spoil everything for you. But one thing that Brandon Sanderson does well, and he does really, really, really well, is magic within the fantasy realm. So for example, in the Mistborn trilogy, the characters get their power by consuming metals in the form of liquid. And it's really interesting, a completely different take on magic that I've ever heard before. Just read them. Everyone's on booktube is talking about it and they're talking about it for a very 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 good reason so just give it a go let me know what you think so next up we have the farseer trilogy by robin hobb it starts off with um assassin's apprentice then royal assassin and then assassin's quest we follow the story of fitz who is actually the bastard son of one of the princes of the realm and it's about him essentially coming to know who he is, especially in the first book, and learning particular uh, skills, assassin skills essentially, in order to survive in this fantastical world. The relationship between him and one particular character called Verity is so interesting. The way Robin Hood writes is just so... everything about her world building, you feel like you're thrown right in there, right into the action, you know what's going on, it's it's just brilliant, everything about it is fantastic. Definitely give it a go, give it a read, it's one of my favourite trilogies that I've ever read, especially in the fantasy, even not being as part of the fantasy, it's still one of my favourites. So next up, which I do have on my bookshelf but I don't want to bring it down because it falls on my face, is the Game of Thrones series by George R. R. Martin. I'm sure I don't really need to go into it that much because I'm sure loads of people have read it and or at least watched the series. It follows these different sets of characters as they're trying to survive in quite a cruel, horrible, harsh world and it's full of magic, it's full of fights, it's full of just everything you could possibly imagine. It's really interesting, definitely give it a go and yeah. Next up we have the Earthsea Quartet by Ursula Le Guin. This is one of the classical kind of fantasy books that you can ever come across. Apparently this was the basis for or at least part of the basis for Hogwarts because this involves a wizardry school. It's about a boy called Sparrowhawk who essentially becomes one of the greatest magicians of his time. It's a typical kind of fantasy book in that this unknown boy suddenly realises he has this great power and it's about his rise to power essentially and his respect in this world. This is definitely one of the fantasy greats so if you haven't read it already definitely give this a go because this will just blow your mind and it's a fantastic heartwarming and heart-wrenching story as well actually. Next up we have Jonathan Strange and Mr Norell by Susanna Clarke. This is definitely one of my favourite more recent fantasy novels. 
This centers around the story of Mr. Norell and Jonathan Strange as they essentially try to bring magic back to England. This is a really good book, really enthralling. The characters themselves are just so diverse and they're so interesting and you can't tear your eyes away. It's got a very kind of almost Neil Gaiman touch about it and it's got this kind of fairy tale element to it. I can't tell you how much I loved reading this book and there's also a BBC series set on this. It's really worth your time and effort and this is by far one of my favourite novels of recent years. Next up we have the Black Magicians trilogy by Trudy Canavan. I absolutely love these series. I think it's a YA fantasy series. It's really good. It focuses around the story of Sonia as she essentially comes from the slums. It's about her trying to survive in a world that she doesn't even really belong in. And she is quite a strong feminine character, quite quite like Vin from the Mistborn trilogy, but probably not as strong as Vin is because Vin is insanely independent. There's also hints of romance in this novel. Not a huge amount, not enough for me to be like, okay, this is a romance novel, it's not, it's definitely fantasy. So it's really good, really recommend you give this a read if you haven't already. And I couldn't continue this YA strand without at least mentioning the Abazin trilogy by Garth Nix. This has been by far one of my favorite fantasy series that I've ever read, YA or not. It focuses on the story of Sabriel and Lyriel and the positions within that realm, particularly on the power of the dead, and it's about being able to bring dead things back to life and bring perhaps even more than that back to life. Really interesting, has one of the best characters in the world, which is Moggat, and if you've read the series you'll know who I'm talking about. Next on my list is The Mists of Avalon by Marion Zimmer Bradley. This novel basically tells the story of King Arthur and Knights of the Round Table, so Camelot, that kind of thing. It focuses on the story of Morgaine, who is Arthur's sister, and it basically follows her from birth to the end of her life. It's a fantastic book. I read this not too long ago, actually, and it took me about a month. It's quite a long book, it's about a thousand pages, but it's so worth the time and effort that you put into this. If you love the Arthurian legend and you love Camelot and you love knowing about Excalibur and the Lady of the Lake, definitely give this a go. Everything that a fantasy should be, this is and it will just keep you enthralled from beginning to end and I really recommend you give this a go. This is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. This is by far one of my favourite standalone fantasy novels. This surrounds the story of a boy who basically gets thrown into a different world and it's about him I guess trying to reconnect with his family. It's a lot about loss, it's a lot about survival. In a way it's kind of like an old fairy tale type story and it's just a brilliant undertaking, by far in my opinion his finest book. It's just so brilliant, so good, so charming and so enchanting. Everything about it is just brilliant. And this video would not be complete without me at least mentioning Raymond D. Feist. These are the first three novels in his entire series featured in Midkemia. So we have Magician, Silverthorn and A Darkness at Sethenon. These are fantastic books. These are one of the first real kind of high fantasy novels I've ever read. This is way before I read Brandon Sanderson or before I read George R. R. Martin. This is probably the first fantasy series I ever read. This was recommended to me by my dad and I have bought pretty much every other book in their series. It threw me in, it ca captured my imaginations. Pug is one of the best characters I've ever followed and his story is just fantastic. But because Raymond D. Feist keeps in this mid world that he's created, you can follow any set of characters within this world and you will feel like you never really left the place. It just keeps on going, it keeps on getting stronger. He's just a fantastic novelist. Everything he does is just written so well. I would definitely start with Magician, I would move on to Silverborn next, and then Darkness at Sethenon. From then on you would have The Prince of the Blood and The King's Buccaneer, which follows around one of the main character's sons. Uh, from the previous three novels. He makes it accessible, he makes it readable, you don't feel like you're ever taking on too much. He's just so fantastic and he throws you into this world full of interesting characters, you don't really ever want to leave and it's just fantastic and brilliant and everything you could ever want. So next up on my list is Bitten by Kelly Armstrong. This is an urban fantasy for adults. 
it centers around the world of this young woman called Elena, as she is basically trying to survive being the only female werewolf in existence. This is by far one of my favorite novels of all time. It's witty, it's funny, it's not too heavy going, it's got action packed, it's full of strong characters, and it doesn't portray romance in like the typical way. There is some element of romance, but it's not like make you want to puke kind of romance. It's actual real, realistic sweet and tough and yeah it's just fantastic one of my favorite books definitely give it a go if you haven't already and last up i couldn't really finish off this video without mentioning the harry potter series by jk rowling i won't go into it too much you probably already know the story it's by far one of the best children's series you could ever read and it's fantastic i'm going to get the illustrated edition of the first harry potter book because it just looks fantastic so that kind of wraps it up for this video i hope you all enjoyed it what are your favourite fantasy series? Tell me in the comments below, like, subscribe, and I shall see you all later. Bye!